I know this is going to make you rant because I know this topic frustrates you. And you're just going to do it anyway, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, of course, because it's great. It makes great television. Um, <laughs> PWA is just like, it feels like the new technology, the new thing to be doing, and all the cool kids are doing it. Mm -hmm. But are PWAs the new native? And I know this is, <laughs> I know that annoys you, so I'll let you rant. So, like, Okay, so PWAs is a, is a term of just like web tech, right? Like certain APIs you can use in the web to bring native flight features. So you could like conceivably have an offline experience, whereas before you'd have the dinosaur. Um, but this argument is still basically can web compete with native, which is the long running yep. thing. And I used to be one of those guys who was like, the web can't compete with native like at all. Like it was like flat out part of the community. Everyone generally was just like, nope you don't use web tech in your apps because it's, it's a bad experience. Yeah. Then I kind of slowly came around to the idea of there's some web tech that you can use. And then eventually it was like, well, the web views are kind of the problem. So then Android changed to the Chromium based web view and things got better. Um, and then as I kind of shift more to just web side of things, I started realizing actually it's just much harder to make a solid web experience, but you can do it. And I think that's, it's less to do with can PWAs um, compete with native or anything like that? It's much more of a case of everyone just has to look at what actually makes sense for what they're trying to achieve and what are their teams capable of achieving. I remember way back in the day, I was trying to do just a navigation draw, so it just slide out, mm -hmm. fade in a background. That was it. Couldn't get 60 frames per second on a desktop. And I was just like, I was talking to Paul Lewis, and I was like, why is this not working? Can you please help me figure this out? And he, he kind of noodled on it a bit and then just sent back like another JS pin. He was like, here you go, I fixed it. And I was looking through the code, not much had changed except like one thing where it was like opacity had changed from being 0 to 0 0.8 to being 0.0000001 to 0 0.8. And I was just like, what the hell is that? Why have you done that? That doesn't make any sense. And he explained it to me. He was like, well, the browser is now trying to render 0.0001. So it's basically invisible to the user. But as far as the browser is concerned, it's rendered it. Yeah. So when you fade it in, it's, it's yeah, it's already on a layer and it can just do some smart graphic stuff and whoop. And it's like no sane web developer who's new to the platform would ever do that. But if you've got experience, you would. And it's kind of the same with native. If you're an experienced native developer on some platform, there's probably certain things that you see a ton of like new people to the platform do and you just be like, that's no, never how you do it. But so, I mean, it does feel like the web is, is a lot more hackery involved. There's a lot more, it feels like um, you're having to do a lot more experimental things. It's not just as clear cut as I use this library and this is what I'm definitely going to get. I know what I'm going to get and there's no problem with the web. And in a sense, I think it's almost, that's the charm of the web. I know it's, it's from yeah. a user point of view, that's not necessarily the greatest thing because it requires you to have um, a certain knowledge and it requires us to uh, like make certain things common knowledge as well. Well, the, 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 you, you, it's two things, right? Like on the one side, if you if you wanted like the nav drawer example, like a native platform, you it's almost encouraged. Like there's a clearly defined path of this is the UX best practices for this platform, how you do it, and you get like a ton of stuff for free. Web, it's just like good luck figuring out what your navigation pattern's going to be. And at that point, it's great because you can come up with anything that you want. You can be as creative as you want, which is awesome. It's a good thing. The flip side of that is you have to build it from scratch yourself, borderline every single time, which is painful because you start doing that across everything you're doing in your experience. And it's suddenly like you've got a big workload, whereas at least with native, you can pick and choose what you're going to do. But doesn't that also offer like the, I mean, you know, just to be uh, playing devil's advocate, but <laughs> doesn't that give you more freedom though on the web? In a sense, because you are responsible for everything. I mean, okay, but, you might use something like React or like one of the and that uh, other sort of like uh, frameworks or libraries or whatever, but you still have that kind of, you set the standard. You have that kind of creative freedom. Yes, but I feel like with native, there kind of comes a certain point of you can do certain things, you get a lot of stuff for free. And then what you end up spending your time on is the thing where we're going to go completely custom on this one thing and we're going to spend all our time and effort on it and we know it's gonna have performance issues and these issues and these issues, but we're gonna fix them. We just need to do a version and then fix it. That's an actual um, choice commitment thing that you're doing rather than yeah. on the web. <laughs> you, you're kind of sitting there just being like, well, you've got to build this component, you need to build this component, you need to do this, you need to do that, and can we reuse any of this ever again? Maybe, maybe not, who knows? And it's way too easy to just get in a scenario where it's not reusable. 
Um, it sounds like you're arguing against the web. <laughs> well, no, but this is, I think the, the thing for me is like, I think both sides have to acknowledge that one way or another, you have to be an expert in what you want. And you also have to set a certain bar of what you expect. I feel like a lot of web developers, you could get to a point where actually this doesn't perform that great. And it's very easy to then sit and go, well, the web is like that as a whole, because you look at other examples of websites and you're like, well, it's doing it there and it's doing it there yeah. and it's doing it there. That's fine. When actually it's like, well, no, just because they're all doing it doesn't mean you can then go, oh, this is fine for us as well. It's no, you should be driving to be better. Um, whereas I feel like with native, there's a certain set of things where you already get further ahead just from the offset because you're inheriting other work from the platform. And the other side is the standard generally is a lot higher because you've got something that's curated a list of here's a shining example of what we can do on this platform. But again, I mean, it, it does feel like um, the downside for me is everything feels very templated on native platforms. Yes. Everything looks the same. I mean, you do occasionally get like um, an app which is like, you know, completely uh, unique. It feels like the web used to be more so like that and web's almost trying to become templated. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the, the awkward thing is you don't, you don't want it to be like that throughout the entire web. Like I, I hit an, a website where it was like, it was like a Fibonacci curl. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, and it was like amazing because everything, like you just have a square and then the page scrolls around and the it's portfolio. like, it's beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. But the caveat of that is obviously is like, if you, you've clearly gone so far afield that it's completely custom. Um, and you could do exactly the same thing. I feel like with web, we have those pseudo standards where it's just like, you remember like the web 2.0, like yeah, yeah. certain gradients and, and border radiuses everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I feel like the web has it. The, the problem is it, it's still that whole thing of everyone's vaguely doing the same thing, but everyone's writing the exact same thing over and over again. That's the bit that I... You think it's a bit frustrating? I find it frustrating, yes. And I think that's why you see things like um, Bootstrap, like everyone loves that because it's just a common thing. You just inherit it, do it, and it works. Um, and it's kind of where I kind of want web components to, to fit into a lot of this. It's just like, okay, do this, and then it works. My biggest concern there is if you look at some of the design patterns from platforms, when there's like, oh, here's a list view, they all largely follow the same, at least from the developer side, like APIs, and this is how you take your data set, you can do whatever you want in the middle, and then the view will just do the smart stuff and make it fast. Components, it still feels like that gap is still very much in the component side, and it's still very opinionated in terms of how it produces the final output. Yeah. And it's just like, I need to customize this, this, and this, and I can't see a clean way of doing it. When I hear the word components, it scares me because it feels like, again, um, the homogenizing, is that the right word? Homogenizing the sort of design standards. And I know it's, it's from a developer point of view, you just want to have like the right answer so you know what you're doing is aesthetically good or functionally, or from a UX point of view, we know that this pattern works. Yeah. But the problem is, is that, f that fear that everything becomes very samey. And I know that to make things as components, it helps like um, enterprise applications because once they've got their um, styled or design thing done, then having components that they, is like customized on the fly because of like, you know, I don't know, like uh, an e-commerce site or whatever. Yeah. It requires that kind of thing. But my fear is when the components becomes a library, then everyone starts looking the same. I mean, how do you fight that? The thing is, when you use a component on a native platform, for the most part, you get styles, but they're normally so horrific. That you're forced to change them. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of that whole thing of like, if you, if you pull in just a list view, it, it's very clear, like they've done nothing to style this. So immediately the first thing you do is start customizing each individual item. And that's the bit that is like, that's where you start getting in your own personality of what the app is. The problem with the web is I see a lot of these things where you go, here's a list view. And it's like, already you start looking like a certain kind of UI app because it's a ton of styles just slapped on top of it. Yeah. And you're like, they don't change it. And that's the bit that I think is your fear, which is why I'm kind of like, you, you need a certain set of components where they're just like blank, boring, disgusting, but they're functional. And then you pile on the design and just how you want it to look and feel on top of it. But you need that good base where it's flexible enough that you can do that. And it's performant enough that it does, there's no worries about pulling that in. No fear that you have to rewrite it yourself. So uh, PWs are not the new native then, is what you're saying. <laughs> I think what people should be discussing is more of the fact of what is the experience you're trying to go for. And it's just, it, you shouldn't really be worrying about the tech. It's like, if you have a team of Android developers, yeah, you should probably be building an Android app rather than asking them all to build a web app. Same as if you have a massive team of web developers, 
There's no reason you should sit there and say, go build an Android app for the sake of it, when it's like, well, no, you can do offline experiences, you can do push notifications, you can do tons of stuff that wasn't possible like from before. So if you have the team of web developers, get them building a PWA. I think the main thing is just don't look at like, oh, native apps are better in this way because of they're more performant and they do this. It's just like, well, no, it's just the web can do that. It's just you have to put the time and effort into it. Don't just see it as switch platforms and then all the problems are fixed, which is what I think this conversation normally uh, encourages. Mm -hmm.